Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and uh, today is my top 10 knives under $100, and there were some great budget knives this year, I had a tough time choosing, now all these knives are in my personal collection, that's how I chose from them, um, and they're, they range from, you know, anywhere from 20 up to $80. So let's get into it. At number 10, we have the CRKT Pelarge. And I'm pretty sure this was in 19. If I mean, it was either in January of 19, that's whenever I got it at least, or in December. So regardless, I'm gonna call it 19, if not. And uh, it's just a slightly larger version of, let's see, where is it at? Of its original, the the regular Pilar, not much of a huge size difference, but it does give you a little bit more room, especially if you choke back right here. Uh, it, I can't get a full four finger grip right here. I get like a barely a three finger grip. This is a heavily modified by me. Um, uh, just a, just a good overall design. I, if I had to say, I would say that this is CRKT's flagship knife. Um, it's a Vox design. You can get it in several different variations. Original, the small version, the original knife came in 8CR with the stainless handles and stainless frame lock. Um, and then they did several iterations of that with S35 and uh, 14, I mean 12C27 with carbon fiber, all kinds of different variations and tons of different uh, things to modify. You can get different scales, you can get different backspacers, um, you can get all kinds of variations on the scales. You can get hardware, clips, everything, you name it, you can modify it. And for me, I just like the size and I love this choke up position. It just, it fits me like glove, the scoop up right there. It's a nice landing spot, excellent. Um, only reason it's at number 10 is because uh, it's, it's not the most amazing flipper. I do a lot of uh, work into mine to make it uh, as good as it is right now. Uh, but, you know, it's adequate. Um, another reason why I have it in the 10 spot, just because they tend to uh, get their knives made in different factories. Like one batch might be made somewhere and another one made somewhere else. So you will have some variances from from batch to batch, from knife to knife. I definitely noticed that on the small. This is the only large I've owned. I've owned eight, eight to 10 of the small ones. All right, the next one, the Ganzo Firebird FH71. Now, I know some people will not buy these knives and hey teach their own I'm, I'm okay with that but um they're they're hard to uh they're hard to say that, that this is not an excellent value these are my go-to uh shop knives i have several of them and you know if i break this knife or I trash it I, it's not gonna hurt my feelings any because I think this is under 30 bucks d2 steel it ho holds a, a good pretty good edge g10 um, on bearings super super smooth contoured deep carry clip excellent action I mean what it's, it's hard hard to to um, say that this isn't a good a, a good value folder um and if you if this one isn't your style uh another great one just as a runner up for that is the the fh41 the only reason this one did not beat out this one to me is because the flipper tab kind of hurts my finger at that point right there but uh another excellent knife i know some people said this you know, this is a ripoff of the Shamwari. Definitely similarities, but you're not going to mistake this over a Shamwari. I promise that. But that one, and if you want a little bit smaller of a knife, this one right here, the FH61, another excellent value right here. 
Um, as you can see, this has been in the shop here lately. Um, just very comfortable. All of them have great action and they're not gonna break the bank. So if you're on a tight budget, you know, you can't go wrong. My first choice is the FH-71. Alrighty, the next one is by Best Tech. It's the Best Tech Texel. This is a collaboration between um, uh, A Purvis Blades and Best Tech. You can see there's the A Purvis logo right there. D2, G10, nice smooth action, nice snappy action. And what I liked about this so much is that he had a higher end version that that he uh, branded under himself that he got made from Best Tech, and that is the Progeny. So this, the Progeny, is the first one that came out. Then he, then he did the collaboration with them, and they kind of revised it in their own way. Um, we'll say that being that this one gets real skinny down here, I like this one being a little bit wider, and I don't know if it's because it's more boxy. This one, I get a better a better grip on it. Ergos are a little better, in my opinion. You got about you got the same. You got a little bit smaller of a blade. No, sorry, same blade, uh, just a little bit different handles. And oh, I added the thumb stud to this one, even though he's coming out with another version with thumb stud. And this one's also has my anodizing finish. That's probably filthy. There you go. The Texel, excellent budget uh, budget knife. Um, it gives you a chance to have a more affordable progeny and have an A-purpose design. So there you go. I still got to post my uh, review of this one. I don't think I posted it yet. <clears throat> All right, another one that I hadn't posted my video on is the uh, number seven spot. And that is the Honey Badger, a large, uh, what do they call in this one? The Warren Cleaver. And um, I think it's more like a sheep's foot cleaver because it does have some, some slight belly going on right here. It's not a straight edge like most Warren Cliffs. Um, pretty darn good knife. Um, it's a good slicer. It's nice and thin behind the edge, especially toward the back right here. Um, it's got good action on it. Excellent action. Nice and smooth. Decently comfortable. D2 steel. My only, the only reason why I didn't make it higher, two reasons. I haven't had this one long as long as the other ones, and I haven't been able to use this one as much. Um, the other ones, I have a lot more use on them. And... One thing that you'll see me, well, no, I'm, I'll save the, the the last for my video, my review, so y'all need to go check that out if you want to know more about this one. But good bang for you, well, good knife. All right, the next one is the CJRB Centros. Um, this is a very impressive knife. CJRB is the budget knives from Artisan Cutlery. Um, this is a Dylan Mallory design. He designed the Arkeo, another another knife that I like a lot. And they just do a lot right, especially for a $40 knife. You got D2 steel. You got G10 uh, scales. You got bearings. <laughs> very smooth uh, you got a nice big blade comfortable in hand deep carry clip there's Dylan's uh, maker's mark the only thing that for me kept this one from being way higher than it is because you know it, it's it's a well done knife and it's liked by many is that this one's fairly thick behind the edge this one measures 25 thousandths and major the majority of the, the majority length of the knife and that's that's pretty darn thick i like them nice and slicey i like them to be at least twenty thousands to make me excited <laughs> but there you go i'd much rather them thinner than that but all righty the next one i picked up at blade show this past year this last year this year um 
And that is the Savivi McKenna. The Savivi McKenna is taking that number five spot. This is the Damascus version. Um, you know, it's also an Elijah Isham design. This is probably the first Isham that that was comfortable in hand for me. Um, I have had several of them. I still own quite a few, but most of them kind of forced my hand in a weird position, and this one's fairly comfortable. This is a great EDC gentleman's carry knife, especially with that Damascus blade. If you're not in Damascus, they also make it in D2. For cheaper, I think the I think the Damascus is like 75, maybe 80, and the D2, I think is 60, 62, something like that. I think it's just a very attractive design, very sleek, and it's a great front flipper. As you can see, it comes rocketing out, at least for me. And I can grab my finger like that and maybe, a, yeah, I can definitely, you can do the reach around, as I like to call it, because it's a liner lock, so you're not putting force on that lock bar. But awesome knife. Only real issue I had was I had to take that pocket clip screw out because it kept getting caught on my, my pants. There you go. Alrighty. So in the number four spot, I I've been loving this knife. Just haven't had uh, as much use on it as I'd like. But it is the Steel Wheel Sargus. Absolutely love the aesthetics of this knife. Love that clip point, that broad clip point. Um, and I'm usually not a black wash fan, but that black and red, I think it just looks sexy. And I love how it slopes down like that. It is super comfortable. Looks like a banana. Super comfortable in hand. Uh, great action on it. It's on bearings as well. Comes thwacking out. In my video, I said it, it was a little off-centered, but that was after I used it a bunch. And it was just the, the pivot had loosened up a little bit. It's back, back dead center again. Excellent, excellent knife. Um, only reason why it's not in the number one spot is the lack of uh, use on it, and um, the the use the things that I have cut with it. I noticed that the edge hasn't you know held up as as long as I would like it to be. But not terrible and uh, easy to strop up. Steel wheel Sargus. I think the Sargus is, uh, I think it's like 55 or so, somewhere in that area. Alrighty, in the number three spot, another Civivi. I try not to make it too many Civivis. These are two completely different knives, and that is the Shredder. If you're looking for a super slicer, there you go. Uh, from what I recall, I mean, they're, they're deep hollow grinds. They do such a good job. You got a super pointy tip. You got a nice long blade. And I don't want to lie to y'all. Let's see what, what the thickness behind the edge is. 11 thousandths. Woo! Wait, hold on. Make sure I didn't get too... Hold on, I'm right at the end. Right there. Sorry, 12 thousandths. That's excellent. That's what I like to see. This thing's been a slicing machine. I also like how it's got the layered blue black G10. You got that deep carry clip. Uh, great action. Nice, you know, pretty slim for as big a knife. I usually don't get the bigger knives, but I bought a few here lately just because they did a great job on them. It's a triple threat. You can use your thumb right here. You can spotty flick it, and then you can flip it with the flipper. Love a triple threat. Um, just good knife, nice forward finger toil. And uh, these, I think, were like 60 or 70 bucks, and not bad at all. Not for what you're getting. <coughs> all righty. The number two spot. Spyderco Power 3 Lightweight. Um, and I'd say the, the main reason why this isn't the number one spot for me is because I carry the bug out more than I carry the Power 3. Even though this is a great knife, 
um, in some ways, I'll, some some aspects I like this more than the the regular Para Three. In some ways, I like this more. You know, the things I like more about this version, besides it being lighter, is the soft and rounded edges you got here and that wire pocket clip. I absolutely love those two things. Um, action's about the same. This one, of course, has that stupid off-centered blade so they can get it to be like that. Um, and there's really no fixing it because you got a plastic washer on one side and uh, or it's just a washer made out of the scale material. And then you have a, a fossil bronze on that other side. So they were able to get it super smooth at the cost of the centering. Not cool, but I can live with it. So my number one knife, I've absolutely, well, real quick, an alternate that's been getting carried more than this guy right here. It's mainly because of Christmas time is the Dragonfly Warncliffe. Dragonfly 2 Warncliffe. Dragonfly is, is a great, you know, smaller knife. And, you know, during Christmas time when I'm opening up lots of envelopes and packages, Oh, that Warren Cliff. Put your finger right there. And you, if you put your finger, you can choose how deep you want it to go into a box. So you put it right there. That's how deep you're going to go because your finger is going to catch that box. That way, if there's clothing or something in there, I can pierce the box and I don't have to worry about getting getting into whatever's in there that, that I don't want cut. So excellent control on a Warren Cliff. You know, this these two pretty much shared the number two spot. Um I, I probably, like I said, I've been carrying this one more. Uh, this one tends to ride in my watch pocket. It's perfect for that. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of the VG10. It's just pretty soft, but it's super easy to touch up. And with such a small blade, I don't, I don't really care too much. Price is a little steep as well. So there you go. Now, let's see. What is your number one knife, Nick? Oh, I've been loving this company lately for their value aspect, and that is Tucson. And for me, the number one knife is Tucson TS-129. There's so much to love about this knife, at least for me. I love the aesthetics. Love that blade shape. It's oh, so sexy. Super smooth. Front flipper, if you want to use it, spotty flick it, slow roll it, thumb flick it. Then you got this beautiful void-free carbon fiber that has been 3D contoured. Look at that. Ooh, makes the ergos pretty darn good. And um, this, this is also um, a super slicer. This one, I just now checked it because I, I was wrong in my video when I did it. This one, who right here, super thin. It's about 13 thousandths right here where my finger is and 14 thousandths the rest of the way. So this thing's a slicing demon. And I'm very glad they use the 14C28N because um, they, do a, they do a good job with that one. Um, I haven't been super impressed with their S90V or their M390 for the most part, but... Their 12C, I mean their 14C and their D2, I'm good with it. Um, you have, you know, you got that excellent uh, 3D contoured pocket clip that's been blindly screwed so you don't have a screw on this side. So much to love. If you can get, if you can score one of these in one of the auctions on eBay, I'd say definitely go for it. In my opinion, even though I think like you could probably get this on AliExpress for like 80 bucks, but you'd have to wait a month to get it. But anything under a hundred dollars is excellent. And I think it's well worth it. And that's just my opinion. Ask anybody else who owns it. They'll probably tell you the same thing. My buddy, um, dog, I always forget his channel. What is it? OCD for EDC. I think it is. He has this knife and he loves it as well. It's just it's just so well made. And if this isn't your flavor, 
I have four more alternates that are excellent as just as well as this one. Uh, the This next one is a Tepe Designs. This is the TS-179. I got a review coming on this one. This one, it reminds me of uh, one of the Spyderco Technos, except so much more, comf more comfortable. And the blade is way thinner. This one is like 12 thousandths, super thin. And I was kind of worried because it's, well, I'm not going to get into this one, but uh, great knife and the, the designer, Tepe Designs. Uh, I've, I love his stuff. There you go, that one. And then you have the TS-111. Looks like a swayback. Excellent action on this one. This one's in D2. It's a night morning design. And another one that I've reviewed already on the channel that I think is a great bargain for what you're getting. And that is the... TS-140 Bowhead. This is an integral. So that means one piece of titanium that's been milled out in the inside. Love that blade shape. It's either I love it or hate it. I love it. Looks like a toucan beak to me. I think this knife is going to get my anodizing finish here soon. You got that opening hole and this is also a front flipper as well. And if you can get this thing for under $200, I think that's a steal as well for an in integral. And this last one, I haven't done the review of this one yet. I still gotta uh, finish testing it, but it's another Tepe design, Tucson, and that is the Maverick. I think this is beautiful. Love that that uh, milling. Look at that, it just plays on the light so well. Love the shape. Kind of reminds me of a uh, bodega blade shape some. Nice and comfortable. So I'm looking forward to review to finishing the review on this one for y'all. So there you go. I know I showed a lot of knives, but like I said, uh, the, the reason why, you know, I didn't just leave this alone. I gave y'all some alternates because I know Sometimes they're not the easiest to, to get. And if you can get, if you can win, if you can do the auctions on eBay for any of the ones I just showed and get them for a good price, I wouldn't hesitate. Um, you know, in my opinion, every one of the knives I just shown, if you can get it for under 200 bucks, <laughs> I'd say get it. But of course, like this one right here, I think I won this one. What is it? I won this one for 47 bucks. I think that is a steal. You know, that's my opinion. Now, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about my choices, what you what, 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 what you have done different, um, uh, or any of them, any that, any that I forgot that you think I should pick up for the channel that is your favorite knife. If, if enough people request it, I'll do my best to pick it up for y'all. Um, once I finish... Once all the, the reviews get uploaded on all the uh, knives that uh, y'all haven't seen yet, uh, I will start doing some uh, long-term, you know, update reviews. I mean, long-term updates on knives that I reviewed. Because a lot of them, you know, to get a true review, I think, you know, I need I need a, a lot more time, and uh, I have a lot of knives that I've used for several months, and I would like to give an update. If that's something y'all would like to see, y'all let me know. I don't want to just do it for, you know, if nobody watches it, I'm not going to do it because i got to put time and effort into those. But there you go. So I hope y'all enjoyed this one. If you made it this long, I don't know, say... Copper Dice is not the goat in the comment section. <laughs> so, so I know you, you're a true loyal subscriber. And I appreciate, I appreciate y'all so much. I uh, hope y'all uh, have a great 2020. 
and be looking out. I have a lot more new knives to review on the channel. Y'all saw a few of them here. I got some, some higher end ones as well. Stay tuned for my uh, top 10 over $100 video, which uh, should be coming out soon after this one releases. All right, guys and girls. So hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.